Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is going to be my install for the CYC Photon. It's an absolutely beautiful day here and it's actually Sunday. So in the UK, you should be saying thank you very much to all your mothers right now. This video is sponsored by Golden Motor, although I actually paid for this motor with my own money because I wanted to make sure that the review I gave was fair and impartial. That said, Golden Motor is an excellent place to buy the CYC Photon as well as all the other CYC products, BBSHDs, pretty much anything e-bike related, including batteries. And if you're a member of the High Voltage Discord, you'll be able to get a 5% off with a code. And that does apply to everything except for things that are already on sale. So I've got all my tools and everything ready, and we're going to go through this stage by stage. I don't expect it to be particularly difficult install. It's a fairly simple looking motor, um, but yeah, let's let's get on with it. So the first thing I want to note is that I'm building this bike on its back, at least for the motor install part of it. And the reason is is that when you put it here, it then it's naturally going to be in the right position without you having to hold it. And when you use something like like the torque wrench. Um, it's quite an unwieldy thing to hold this in one hand and then support the motor in the other hand. So that's why that's why I do it like that. And you can also hold the cup of this with the other hand and make sure that it doesn't slip off and do any kind of mark or damage any of the components when you're putting that on. So I'm going to be doing it upside down. Um, the first thing I notice when I put it on is that it's going to be impinging here on my gear cable here that I use to change the gears at the back. And CYC sent, apparently this is what this plastic part is for, is to, to separate, but um, it's not really gonna work. It's not really gonna work for me. So I've 3D printed um, something to go in, in place of that, and I'm gonna zip tie that on as the very first job. Um, if people want one of these um, to fit their bike, um, I don't know you can buy me a coffee or something and I'll just adapt the design and send you the file so you can uh, you can print that yourself. So I'm gonna get that zip tied down and then we'll get on with the first stage, which is a, a dry fit of the motor. So that's now in place. Um, when you're putting the motor on, um, you need this part here, you need this part here, and you need the spacers. And depending on the size of your bottom bracket, you'll need to use um, all three in my case, or maybe just one or even possibly none of these spaces. So for me, I need to put a three millimeter one, which is the smallest one on the motor side or, or the drive side. And then the other two spaces, which are a seven mil and a five mil on the other side. So they sort of fit on this part here. So uh, the other part you need is this part here. And this part goes on before the spaces go on. So I'll put that all together and I'll show you how that looks up here on the bottom bracket. Okay, so if we come around to this side, you can see that I've got a three mil spacer here, and that one. Then I have a three mil space, sorry, I have a five mil spacer and the seven mil spacer. And then we have this bracket here, and this bracket is what bolts and holds the motor in position from that side. So if I finish screwing this in, this goes into the bottom bracket and tightens clockwise. So now that's all the way in. I'm gonna look around and check the clearances and it looks nice and neat. And particularly here, uh, make sure that this is correct and that this is flush and that you're not putting any kind of stress on this plate because this plate needs to line up perfectly. And if for any reason it doesn't line up perfectly, CYC have supplied some shims because not everything with these is perfect. Um, sometimes there is some slight variation in the different sizes um, if they're not cut quite correctly uh, in, the, in the factory. So if there is any variation, which we don't have here, you can use these. So I'm gonna take this apart. I'm gonna put a bit of grease on, assembly grease on the threads on this, and then I'm gonna get that in position. And then we're gonna use the torque wrench and we're gonna torque this into position uh, to spec. Actually, I should say before we actually torque this down, uh, with the correct torque, um, you do need to put the bolts in here to hold this in place. And to do that, there are two spaces that slot in there and they just bring 
this flush to the edge. And if you're putting this on a, a really wide bottom bracket, you probably wouldn't use any of these at all. Um, but I'm gonna use both of these spaces and that's gonna bring it to the edge and then I'll use the bolts. And it just says to tighten these, there isn't actually a, a torque spec for this particular part. So with these bolts secured in place, the next thing is to secure this and that's the last part, bonk. That's the last part. So I'm using a torque wrench here and that's been set to 37 foot pounds, which is 50 newton meters or the equivalent of 50 newton meters of force. So I'll get that locked into position and then that should be uh, that part done. And then we have to move on to, to putting the spindle in. So I have to say everything has been extremely easy to do so far. Everything seems to be going on the bike really, really easily. So the next stage is to get this on here. Um, see what C said to do this at the start. Um, I didn't, I don't really think it matters. Um, so I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to use the, uh, the lockering and CYC's tool in order to get that, get that done. So this is the, uh, this is the tool in question and it's not particularly difficult to use. Um, all I'm going to do is really is grip hold at the wheel here to stop it moving and then twist that round and it just says, says to hand tighten. So I'm going to tighten it, um, as tight as I can get it really, because I don't want this to be coming loose when I'm riding the bike. So I've got this on as tight as I can get it with this tool. Um, the issue is, is that when you tighten it, it wants to turn the wheel, right? It wants to turn it round. So I think I'm going to probably try and do one more final tighten. Um, I've got my, uh, I've got my chain whip here. So I'm going to use the chain whip, um, to work opposite. Um, to this to give me more grip than just just holding it on by hand but if anyone's got any ideas how to sort of keep this sort of in more position so you can get more torque on it um, I'd be interested to know because it, it's not it's not the easiest thing to get it really tightened up and hopefully that's not going to cause uh, any kind of problems for me so now I've got it as tight as I possibly can um, the next stage is to use the grease um, I'm going to put a bit in and around here and a bit also on the spindle itself and I'm going to put some in around the back as well on that bearing um, just to get get a nice seal so I'm just using some some nice sort of bicycle grease here and I'll save the uh, I'll save the CYC stuff for later so I'm just going to grease in and around here and then a bit A bit in and around the back as well. And then I'm going to put some also on the bearings and then we'll get that, get that slotted in. So you don't have to go crazy with this or anything. Um, you're just trying to seal around either side to prevent any moisture from getting in. So we're just going to slot this in and then we're just going to wiggle it about a bit until it meshes with the teeth. There we go. And that should then slot through to the other side. I'm just going to put the camera down and get that secured through. So now that's nicely in position. Uh, the next part is to use the lock ring. And this basically secures the spindle through and ensures that it doesn't back out. And you need to make sure that there's no sort of lateral play, um, but you also don't want to have it too tight to prevent the cranks from moving smoothly either. So this threads on and it threads on with this sort of lip here facing to the inside. And it just simply threads on. Now there is a tool here, um, there's a little hole, if you can see it here. And this hole lets you tighten it a bit more um, with an Allen key. Um, so I'm gonna tighten that on and then we need to check and make sure that it's smooth. So this is the hole with the Allen key. And what I found is a neat trick is if you put one of the cranks on, on this side, you can actually hold hold the position with this, where you've got it, how tight you want it. 
and kind of move it backwards and forwards with this, with your hand on here using the crank. And you can feel how smooth it would be um, when you're pedaling. And if it feels too tight, you can back it off a little bit. Um, and if it's okay, then you can proceed to the next step, which is to secure this in position using, using the bolt here. So once the lock ring is tightened completely, uh, you can then do a final check to make sure you're happy with the smoothness of everything. Um, and if you are, we can move on to installing of the crank arms itself. And the first step for that is to get it properly spaced out on this side using the spaces that come with the kit. So in the instructions, they say to use this spacer and also a couple of shims to bring it so that you can barely see the line at the edge. And I can just barely see and indicate that with my nail here. So I know I've got that in the right position. So then what I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of assembly grease onto the splines here, and then we're gonna torque these into place. And I think it's about 25 foot pounds of torque for that. So here they are, nicely greased and ready. I should say with these, there is an indicator on here. So this one tells me this is the right crank. And this one is the left crank. So make sure you use the correct one because uh, I believe they are slightly different. So that's the cranks on and the spec. The spec calls for um, 22 foot pounds is the actual conversion from 30 Newton meters. But what I found was in effect, just the effort required to put on the cranks um, is actually more than 30 newton meters by by quite quite a way so i'd say these are on with more with more like i don't know 50 than 50 and 30 if i had to if i had to guess i mean i could probably figure it out but they they certainly feel on there and it seems to be turning nice and smoothly so overall um it's a slightly different way of doing things but um i'm impressed um, I'm impressed with how easy this was to to install. Um, so from here, I'm going to move on to the to the electronic side of things, and you can have a look at how I'm going to be doing this on the bike. And uh, yeah, uh, you don't have to watch the electronics if you don't want. I mean, everything's going to be going to be different, but uh, I'll show you how I'm going to be doing things, and then uh, maybe that'll give some of you guys some tips. But um, yeah, it looks really nice. It's got. Awesome ground clearance, even though I had to clear clear this cable. I mean, if you don't have a cable like this, you can get it even closer to the frame. Uh, but this is going to be this is going to be excellent. So, on with the wiring. So this is the speed sensor, and for people that don't know or haven't used these before, uh, this is basically what connects with or is triggered by a magnet on the back wheel here and you position it on a spoke. This is one from the existing kit that I'll probably, I'll probably repurpose it. So I have two on this bike and then you get a more accurate reading because it triggers twice for every revolution rather than once. Um, but the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have it coming around here. I'm going to wire it in and then I'm going to try and figure it out so that I secure it. So I just have a straight runner cable here. Um, it's not a particularly long cable here, so I think I'm going to be able to have it straight because I, I don't want to be wrapping it around because I don't have that much clearance with, with the tire here. So I want to make sure that it's um, as neatly tucked in as possible and following this, this existing um, cable here and going into position there. And then once it's there, I'll make sure that it's adjusted right. And there is a screw here and you can bring this forward and back um, or closer or further away from the magnet depending on depending on what you need to do. I should say that um, CYC mentioned this quite specifically. Um, there is a uh, an arrow on these high go connectors, and you need to make sure that the high go arrow is lined up accurately because they're quite small pins in there. Um, actually, this is the most pins I've ever seen for um, for a speed sensor, and I think that's because there's a Bluetooth unit in this as well, um, which makes sense because it keeps the Bluetooth then away from electrical interference. So hopefully it's going to work much better than the, than the other Bluetooth stuff. So based on the length of the cable, now it's plugged in, um, I'm going to pick as close to the end of this as possible so that I have a straight runner cable without having to do any sort of twisting or um, or moving about things. So it attaches with two zip ties and I'm just gonna zip tie it onto there and then I'll show you how I'm gonna secure the rest of the cable. 
So what I've noticed with the first fit of this is that it's not that close to the uh, to the sensor um, with the magnet. And these things usually need to be fairly close to trigger properly. And I'm also noticing that it, it's a little bit slippery on the metal with the plastic at the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a small piece of hush tape and put that on the back to enable it to tighten more. And I'm also gonna use the, the screw at the back here and I'm going to adjust it so it brings it a bit closer to, to where the sensor is. So this is what I mean by the hush tape, and I'm just gonna stick that on the inside of the frame there in the right position, and that's gonna stop it slipping and moving when the bike's being used. So you can see how now that's done. Um, the zip ties are holding it firmly in place, and we've got a really nice close distance. So this magnet will trigger the sensor when it passes with it or passes by it, no problem. Uh, so the next stage is now to get this neatly secured onto the frame here so that it's not in the way and doesn't get caught by anything. So to secure it to the frame, I've gone for two points. I've gone one here, and then I've also gone for one here, which is around where the connector is. And you've got to be careful with these wires, especially with zip ties, um, because the edges of zip ties are actually actually quite sharp. And what you can find is that if you, if you put these on too tightly um, and the wires are stressed, it can cut into the wires and then you can get damage to the internal wires. So I actually made some protectors for these and these basically fit around the wires um, to spread the load and to stop and prevent the zip ties from, from cutting into them. So I'm going to be using these throughout the wiring on the bike uh, to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no damage to the internal structure of these wires. And then um, eventually I'm going to be making something that will protect the wires here to stop things like branches and debris if I take this uh, through the bush or anything um, from whipping into these and damaging damaging the cables. So that's the that's the speed sensor wiring. Um, the next one I'm going to do is figure out where I want to run the, the main harness wiring up to the front of the bike. So with my uh, with my main harness wires, uh, I've decided to go up along up here and along the top, which is going to use almost all of the length rather than this sort of doubling back or bending it or putting stress in it or anything. And I've used these little zip tie gadgets all the way along to make sure that I'm not cutting into any of these wires um, with any of the uh, with any of the zip ties and I've got them across the top. It looks a bit funny here at the moment because I kind of wanted to use my half twist throttle, but um, the Bafang pattern is not the same. So until I open up the throttle and switch that around, I'm going to be on the thumb throttle and I'm just going to print a little bit to fill in the gap there unless I can find the old piece that I used to have. Um, so I'm going with the uh, with all the controls um, on the, the left-hand side here. Um, so I'm going to uh, get this all tidied up and then I'm going to get the battery in and we're going to give this a quick power on and make sure everything's everything's all working here. So here we go. Moment of truth. Power on. Here we go. CYC power on. Should we try the throttle? Nothing. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll hook up the app and see why that's not happening. But uh, yeah, everything's on and the power does seem to be. I wonder if it's because I'm on zero. What if I put it up to one? Oh, here we go. That sounds really kind of smooth. Cool. All right. Well, I guess on zero... There's no power in the throttle. Um, so that's awesome. That's kind of a neat, uh, a neat safety feature. God, I'm going to have to charge this battery. I'm not registering much there. I'll also have to change it to kilometers an hour. Okay. So I'm going to do a tidy up and I'll get the battery installed and you guys can see, see the finished thing and, uh, it'll be all ready to, to do some test drives and or test rides and I can get the app hooked up and see how that all works. So that is my install finished here. Uh, I've got the battery bag on. It is an older one and I'm not quite happy with the fit. So I'm actually having a custom battery bag or um, triangle bag built that's gonna fit this entire frame here. 
and it's going to let me put the battery on and it's also going to give me like a neat compartment um to fit tools and anything else that i might want to run especially if i want to run a secondary battery and run some lights and things so i'm quite pleased with how it's gone on um i really like the fact that for once they haven't made the wiring like ridiculously long like Sometimes you end up having to put all sorts of coils of things on there. I certainly did with my BBS HD. It's nice to see that they've gone for the average bike rather than making it, you know, long enough to fit a tandem or something like that, um, because it makes it really easy to do a clean job of the wiring. I'm really pleased how my, my zip tie things have worked, and I think they're going to stop me running into problems with pinching the wires and things. Um, I like the look of the bike. I like the feel of the bike. And I'm going to go out and see how this goes. Not particularly long because I don't have much in the battery. So I'm going to charge the battery. Um, we'll get the cameras out and I'll do some ride footage. Um, we'll see how it works with the CYC app. Um, see what I've got to do with the controls and everything to get that all set up for the right wheel size and everything like that because I haven't done any of that yet. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with it. I'm super happy with how it went on. Um, it's very, very streamlined. I think I've decided what I'm going to do with regards to protecting these wires. And I think I'm going to use the underside of the cage here and I'm going to make, um, a little ramp, um, protector that, that bolts onto here and then sort of channels it up here. So it'll basically, if something gets in there, it's, it's going to hit that and then it's not going to lash into the wires because I, I don't like the way the wires come there. And I think still for me, I think CYC would have been better taking these out of the other side of the motor. I mean, maybe there's a reason why they can't do that, but I think it would have been better to do that. But I'm I'm really pleased with how it went on. And uh, as I say, I'm off to have some fun. So if you've made it this far on the install, uh, thanks very much for watching the channel. Thanks very much for everybody that uh, supports the channel directly. It's really, really appreciated. Um, thanks to Golden Motor for sending the motor across. Um, yeah, brilliant. So I've had a fun afternoon doing all this. There's still a little bit more tidying to do, a few parts to fix up there. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So I'll see you in the next video, which will have probably some ride footage and probably a look at the CYC ride app and how that works and how I've been able to tune it and if it's riding how I want to. And we're going to do lots of different riding over all kinds of different terrain, um, see how hot it gets, uh, see how far we can push it on the throttle, um, see how I like the pass feel, everything. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.